Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So a couple weeks ago, I made a reduction woodcut for John over at NYC CNC. And so if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it over here. But so anyways, that print was a bit of a swap. So I made the print for him, and then he made a new mezzotint rocker jig for me. So in this video, I thought I'd go through what he made and how I'm going to use it. And so this is the part that John made for me, and it's really fantastic. So you can check out the video over on his channel going through the CAD and the design of it, and then the whole machining process out of aluminum. And so I'll link to that over here as well, so make sure to go check that out. And so I'm already getting started using the rocker to make new mezzotint plates. And so I'm going to go ahead and go through how I put together the rocker jig and then how I'm using it to rock the plate. So let's jump right into the video. So real quickly, if you don't know what a mezzotint plate is, essentially it's a piece of copper and you use this mezzotint rocker to create a ground across the plate. Basically tons of tiny dots because the edge of this tool is covered with 85 tiny points per inch and they cut right into the copper. And at that point, if you were to ink up the plate, you know, put a paper on it and run it through the etching press, it would be a solid black image because the, the little pits and spikes, they hold a lot of ink. So you go through with a scraping tool and scrape and then burnish down these little points and pits and that makes your lights and your darks. And so in the description box of this video, I'll have links to you know a bunch of other videos that go through the whole process. And so there's really three parts to this. There's the rocker jig at the end that holds the actual rocker and the weights. There's the pole and then on the far left you can see the, the support that holds the pole. And this lets it slide back and forth as you rock across the plate and it keeps the pole in line. And so I wanted this whole setup to be really portable. So I'm using a clamp on the left side and that's what holds the actual pole in there. And I have a U-bolt that's connected to this clamp so I can clamp it on any surface I'm working on and be able to arrange the whole setup however I want. And so my first step here is to mount the U-bolt onto this clamp. And so I'm just drilling some quarter inch holes through the end of this clamp to hold it. Now it's just a matter of slipping the U-bolt through the holes and then using a couple of wing nuts to tighten it down. I wanted to make it all really easy to take apart by hand, so I didn't need any tools to do it. Alright, now for the business end of the rocker jig. So this is the part that John machined for me, and it came out fantastic. The surface finish is great, it just looks perfect. And so he gave me a thumb screw that I can use on the top, and the hole is for a one inch dowel. So when you put the dowel rod in there, I can, you know, clamp it down and keep it secure. And then at the end here, I have two weights that I purchased from EC Lions and those bolt right through into the piece that John machined. And it has threaded holes, so I can just use a screwdriver and, and screw it all together. And so for the smaller mezzotint rockers, they have two holes in them that line up perfectly with the, the bolt pattern on the, the weights and the, the jig assembly. But for this larger rocker, it doesn't have the holes. So what I can do is just mount it right below the bolts, and then when I screw it all together, it clamps the rocker in between the weights and the aluminum and makes a completely solid connection. Alright, so now it's all screwed together. I can pop in the dowel and then tighten up the thumb screw. And then finally, before I can get to work, I just clamp on the end post down at the end of my desk. And then I feed in the wood dowel right through it. And so the last thing I need to do before I can start rocking a plate is just sharpen up the rocker first. So I have this sharpening jig that I also got from EC Lions. And you just drop the handle of your rocker into it and then it has a thumb screw to tighten it down. And you can adjust how far it sits in that groove that you can adjust the angle that you're grinding down when you're sharpening the tool. And to make sure I get my angle right and that I'm, you know, sharpening the right spot, I go over it with a marker just along the edge. And then after my first few passes, I can see what part of the marker got rubbed off and make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong and changing the angle of the grind. Now to do the actual sharpening, I'm just using an Arkansas oil stone and then just a layer of mineral oil. And I do this every time before I rock a new plate, just so I have a nice new sharp set of teeth on the end. And so you can see this tool really makes it easy to get a nice sharp edge and a really consistent angle because it only lets you do it in, in one angle and you just go side to side and make sure you get all the teeth. And once you have it super sharp, then we can move on to rocking the actual plate. And so how you rock your plate is really up to you. There's a whole lot of ways to do it. But if you look at uh, Carol Wax's book called The Mezzotint, there's a whole lot of really good examples, and this is kind of out of that book. So I've just made a template that has a piece of drawer liner as the base, and the copper plate really sticks well to that. And then I cut out a, a thin piece of mat board in a circle, a little bit bigger than the plate that I'm going to be using, and I just marked off angles all the way around it. But you just want to make sure you have a nice solid ground all the way across the plate, and you can't see any of the flat copper underneath. 
And this takes a couple hours to do, so I end up forgetting where I'm at if I don't have some kind of marking system. And then here you can see after the first pass, I rotate the plate 22 and a half degrees, move my marking thumbtack, and then rock another pass. So this plate's gonna be used for the last of the three laws of robotics, the Isaac Asimov series that I was working on. And I did the first two a long time ago, and this is the final plate, and I'm really looking forward to finishing it off and getting the whole series printed off. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna keep rocking this plate. All right, so I couldn't be happier with how the mezzotint rocker jig turned out. You know, it's fairly lightweight, I can take it apart to store it, and it really looks fantastic. So thank you so much, John, for helping me put this together. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week, and I'll be back soon with a new video. Thanks. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support the creation of these videos, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page. Thanks.